Acha Unger, Sargon, Deputy Opinion Editor for Newsweek, joins us now. I, I do not believe you live in uh, Westfield, New Jersey, but uh, I'm sure you know some people who do. <laughs> Has, is this a culture war or is it a class war as defined by culture? I mean, so surprise, surprise, I think that this is a class war masquerading as a culture war. You have these people living in these extremely high income neighborhoods demanding that their children be taught, you know, the kinds of woke ideologies that you see now increasingly on Twitter, but nowhere else. And it's so funny because you would think that this would be a red flag, right? You know, the high income of the people demanding this kind of teaching for their kids. But instead, what ends up happening is the entire Democratic seems, party seems to be coalesced blessing around these kinds of teachings, in other words, revealing that their real base is people whose household income is $250,000, $300,000 a year. It's interesting because we all thought about Loudoun County, Virginia. That was where the CRT debate centered uh, during the, the last, uh, I don't know, 18 months or so. It's, there was huge bathroom issues there. It's the exact same place that was ground zero for Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, to win Virginia. Uh, back in 2021, household income there, 142000 a year. It's one of the richest counties uh, in the whole country, right outside of Washington, D.C. I'm wondering what this means, uh, because if we look at in the video from Loudoun County, the famous video of parents coming and being able to fight for their kids and saying, no, I don't want my kids taught CRT, or no, I don't want my 15-year-old daughter in the same bathroom as an 18-year-old man who's transitioning to be a woman. Um, they have the time and the energy to come to the school board meetings and fight for it. Parents in inner city Chicago or in Detroit or in St. Louis don't have that luxury. Yeah, and of course, they're the one who's, ones whose children are, you know, downwardly mobile and increasingly don't have access to a good education, don't have access to the American dream. And of course, the COVID pandemic and the lockdowns and the school closures widen the racial gap between white children and black and Hispanic children, you know, by, by, by a large margin. So, you know, and you have this, this situation where you have these school districts in inner cities, in Democratic-led cities, and again, I say this as a lefty, in Democratic-led cities where the children, you know, Baltimore children, 40% of children have a 1.0 GPA, and no one will address this. No one will talk about those children. No one will talk about how do we give those children a future. And instead, all of the political energy on both sides is about these, you know, culture war issues that again, again, reveal a big class divide. Middle and working class parents want autonomy. They want a role and the right to determine what their children are taught, whereas the children of these elites increasingly want to see their children taught an ideology that comes from academia. Yeah, this is the superintendent of the school district. The lesson plans are a sample list of resources aligned to the New Jersey student learning standards to be considered as school districts work on revisions to the health and physical education curriculum. I actually have no idea what that statement means, um, and I won't ask you and put you on the spot by saying it. How much of this comes down to the teachers' unions? I mean, I think a lot of it. Uh, the teachers' union does seem to have something on the Democratic Party. They're very, very tightly aligned. When it was very clear that the majority even of Democratic voters were done with school closures, they wanted those schools open, the schools remain closed, the, the teachers' unions have so much power, and somehow um, Democratic politicians mm. are unwilling to cross them, unwilling to stand up for parents and for the children that they're supposed to be representing. Hey, Bacha, unfortunately, we have to go. Um, coming up sometime either this week or next, I want to have you back and talk about uh, the politics and the media's coverage of what's happening in Israel. I know it's near and dear to your heart, mine as well. And uh, for the international media, it's pretty shameful. So we'll talk soon, all right? Great. Talk yeah. to you soon. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.